In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a moment to call to mind our sins, that the mercy of the Lord might be new for us this afternoon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just. For my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants. All who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. 
for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles. I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is a reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord.
Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. The Lord be with you. And a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus' homage, homage saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good evening, everybody. Where's a place that you would least expect to find some, someone looking for Jesus? What's a type of person that you would least expect to be searching for Jesus? Whatever your place is and, and the person you've called to mind is, whoever that is, they are the woman in our gospel this evening. Because Jesus today has taken his disciples well out of their way on a 25-mile hike to get to this place that we hear called Tyre and Sidon. And there he, he encounters this Canaanite woman. And for the Jewish mind, a Canaanite woman would have been an outsider. Someone who wasn't a member of our tribe, our clan. And someone that we don't want to have anything to do with. And so there's not a chance that someone like this would want to have something to do with Jesus right? At least that's what Jesus' own disciples thought. And so when she comes before them, they start trying to find a way to get her out of their way. Jesus, get her out of here. She's not one of us. And then starts this interesting conversation between the woman and Jesus, the end of which shows her to be a person of deep faith. That on that day, in that place, salvation entered this woman's life because of such an unlikely thing happening that Jesus would come to her. Why is Jesus there? He shouldn't even be there. But there he is. Everyone, the whole story of the Bible, if we could distill it down into something as short as like one or two sentences, is that the whole story of the Bible is about God searching us out. What God wants from the very beginning of the Bible to the very end, what God wants 
tonight for each one of us is to find us, to seek us out in our need, in our sin, in, in, our, in our desire for salvation. And so when Jesus comes on the scene, he begins to do that the way God had done that before he was there, through the Jewish people, through the Israelites. Jesus has come, and, and he's seeking to, to build this new kingdom that unites heaven and earth. But then he goes out. He steps out of the ordinary, all of the people you would think or expect to have something to do with God, or the people you would expect God to care about, Jesus takes that step out. And he seeks them out as well. That all are gathered back together to God. And this is what Jesus' mission was, to gather all that had been lost because everyone made in the image and likeness of God is made for God and has a desire for God. And God is seeking everyone out. And so then at the end of the gospel, Jesus send his, sends his disciples out to continue the work he's done. To seeking out those we would least expect, those who might have faint ideas of who Jesus is, but perhaps have never even stepped inside of a church? And do we believe that they belong here? Do we believe that those who aren't with us tonight and, and that person you called to mind should be here or perhaps wants to be here? And how does that even happen? Through us seeking them out. Through us taking that step out to invite them in. A couple days ago, I, I had the chance to get on my bike, and so I, I had about an hour, and so I, I start riding my bike towards Bettendorf, and I get maybe about 15 miles away from here uh, when I blow my front tire. And I said something maybe a little more dramatic than, oh, shoot. And I don't have my phone on me, and so I decide, well, I guess I'm walking back. And I've got things happening the rest of the evening. I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to miss some stuff. And so I'm walking for maybe about six miles, and I get to the Duck Creek Golf Course right around there. And all along the way, over those miles, people were passing me by, and they were looking at me. And I was kind of looking at, at them to... to see maybe if they had a hand pump on their bike, or even just to make eye contact, maybe they could help me out. And, and I made eye contact with a lot of people, but a lot of people passed me by until I got to Duck Creek Golf Course. And once again, I, I pass a guy, and I look at him, and I think I see a pump on his bike. And our eyes catch, but he passes me by. I was looking for what I thought he had, but he passed me by for about five seconds. When I hear a call out, how far do you got to go? And I say, quite a ways. And he turns around, comes up to me, and lo and behold, he not only has a hand pump, he has a new tube. And there on the side of the bike path, we uh, switch out tubes, pump my bike up, and I'm on my way back home, and, and I'm back in time. I was searching for something he had. I needed something he had, but I wasn't willing yet to like ask him for help. He had to take the initiative to encounter me, to stop, to turn around and say, hey, do you need help? How often are we passing people that might be searching for what we have in faith? but we just pass them by. How many people are wanting God? How many people is God seeking out through us, but we just don't pay them any mind? Because we don't expect that we have anything we could do for them or, or that we have what they need. Friends, the point of our gospel, the point of all of our readings this weekend is that everyone is called to be gathered back to God 
that there's not a single person on this earth that shouldn't be with us here. May we seek them out to give them the faith we've received so that one day they might join us at this altar and experience the God who comes to us through the Eucharist we celebrate. Friends, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the whole giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead life of the world to come. Amen. With faith and trust, let us entrust all of our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For the church, may the Holy Spirit guide us in all things, helping us to observe what is right and do what is just. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, May the Spirit help to unite people across cultures, races, and religions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or suffering in any way, may they find comfort in God's bountiful mercy and in his compassionate care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the Lord stir our hearts for beginning and ending all days in praise of his goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may God let his face shine upon them and bring them to everlasting life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For George and Rosemary Woodhouse, all the faithful departed, all the intentions listed in her book of prayers, for all of our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask, we entrust you all of our prayers. Please answer them according to your will for us. We bring all this to you in the holy and powerful name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, I invite up any children to participate in our children's offertory. Our offertory hymn can be found in the music issue. It's number 534, Prayer of St. Francis, number 534.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founts of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn can be found in the music issue. It's number 340, Behold the Lamb, number 340. <laughs>
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If you could please be seated for just a brief moment. I promise it's not another capital campaign. <laughs> on September 11th, we're super blessed and excited to have coming here to Our Lady of Victory uh, an internationally known speaker, Jason Everett. He's been here once before, but he speaks on issues that uh, really hit home for families, but for people of any age uh, uh, within our modern context. And so he's coming here September 11th for an evening talk followed by confessions and, and adoration. The following day, he'll be speaking to all of the middle schoolers and high schoolers within Scott County Catholic Schools over at Assumption. And so we have a little video invitation from Jason Everett uh, to get, get us excited and, and to help spread the word about this event that's coming up. Young people are hungry for straight answers to tough questions about love, dating, and relationships. And I think it's just time we make the answers a little bit easier to find. My name is Jason Everett, and for the past 20 years, I've been traveling the globe, speaking to about a million young people about chastity. And what I'm seeing is that right now, we live in a culture of single people who pretend like they're dating. We have a culture of dating people who pretend like they're married, and we're stuck with a culture of married people who seem to think that they're single. Everything is out of order. We live in a culture where more people hook up than even hold hands. And I think for the young people, they're being told everything they're not supposed to do when it comes to dating and relationships. But nobody's talking to them about what they are supposed to do when it comes to dating. I think they're tired of the fear tactics, the shame and the guilt trips. When what they really want to know is how to find and build authentic love. They want to know how to start over. They want to hope again that love even exists. And I think for the parents, a lot of them don't even know where to begin when it comes to talking to their kids about dating and chastity. And so all of this is why we created Purified. Purified is an event for the entire parish community, everybody ages 13 and up, where we can come together to discover the beauty of God's plan for human love. But it's not just a motivational speech. After the talk, uh, there's gonna be a time of Eucharistic adoration with praise and worship music, and an opportunity for anyone who wants to come and receive the Sacrament of Reconciliation. It's a time for the whole family to just reset and to begin again. It's a time to encounter the source of love himself. And when the night is over, every family is gonna go home with all kinds of resources so that this message is going to stick and it's gonna last. And so bring your family, invite other families, bring your friends, your grandkids, your girlfriend, your future ex-boyfriend, <laughs> whatever it takes, just come. It's an event you're not going to want to miss. And so to register, just go to chastity.com, and I hope to see you there. And there are tickets for that event being sold in the gathering space after Mass this evening. Ignite Sunday begins tomorrow, Mass at 4.30, dinner and programming afterwards. Next Saturday at the 4.30 Mass, we'll have a guest priest, Father Luke Spanigel, who's a Eucharistic preacher. He'll be preaching next Saturday's Mass, and then he will be giving a talk here in church uh, beginning around 6.30, 6.45. So all are invited to that. This is a part of our efforts with the National Eucharistic Revival. The tribunal staff will hold an open forum on marriage, divorce, and annulments Thursday, August 24th at 6.30 p.m. over at Our Lady of Lourdes in Bettendorf. No reservations are required. Victory vouchers are available for purchase in the gathering space after Mass. And then finally, it is Social Saturday, and so please stick around for some refreshments after Mass this evening. Hope you all have a great and safe week, if you'd please stand. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. As we go forth, we'll sing the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. It's in the music issue number 200.
number 200. Zero, zero. <laughs> 